bad, not a bad glove hand. Pretty good hitter. And you were a pretty good second baseman. You had the range of a Maytag, but you could hit, my friend. Oh, listen. You had the wonky knees back then. How they, uh, how they shape it up these days? This one's operated on, and the suit's still pending. So uh, what can I tell you about that? <laughs> Our buddy Rick Howe, who drove me to the, uh, picked me up at the airport last night. He said, uh, you slipped up some ice outside a bank, and, uh, what? Yeah, inside. Inside a bank? Yeah, of all places, I haven't. <laughs> Sue the sons of guns, are you? Listen, we'll get into that later. Uh, exactly. Much later. I love those little envelopes that open at the end, you know, from the lawyers. <laughs> we'll have a bunch of those by the time the show's over. No, I'll be nice. It's called Fishes and Loves. Uh, 15 minutes after 9 o'clock. Anyway, you went to the queue, mm -hmm. and uh, you worked out there with a kid that was in this town at one time. Uh, Brother Jake, whatever happened to him? Brother Jake's now doing Vancouver. Uh, he's doing weekends. He's currently residing in the Where Are They Now file. <laughs> no, yeah. he's, he's yeah. doing well. I mean, yeah. ra I mean radio. It's, it's, As the expression would go, I'd rather be a has-been than a never-been. There you go. It's a tough business, radio. I no could, I could fired at Q107 for being loud and obnoxious. Who's the morning show host there now? Howard freaking Stern. If you can imagine. And I was too loud and obnoxious when the ratings went. They, they fired Jake a year after that. He's in Vancouver. He's doing well. That's right. Uh, good old Vernon Maserol was his real name. It was it Vernon Maserol? How's that for a maritime name? Vernon Maserol. Got him a couple of times cooking it up at Tony's Donair at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Let's take another slice off the loaf here, baby. <laughs> Is Tony still around? Is he? King of Donair? Oh, i got to have those. Three national championships and still the best in the province. What do you think? <laughs> huh? Oh, they're a softball team, too? <laughs> I'll, have, uh, I'll have a couple of big fat ones and a bottle of anything to go. That's right. Oh, you and me at three in the morning. And then wake it up with it all over your chest in the morning wondering what in the name of God is going on. Oh, like a glazed donut. When you got to Q107, uh, you were on the air. The very first day that you were on there speaking of lawsuits, Oh yeah. you had one. The, the very first deal. Take us back to that time. Oh, that was scary. And it was who? J.I. J.I. Albrecht. He's sitting in Cape Britain listening to your show at Q107. Now, that's a tweeter and a tuner. Well, apparently his son's a highfalutin, uh, uh, snotty little uh, agent in Toronto. Yeah. And uh, apparently he's actually doing quite well, so his kid's listening to me on Q107. I'm going on. You know what he did, J.I., to this town. I mean, it was just a... Well, is he listening now? Because, <laughs> you know, the, the lawsuit's still pending. Oh, is it? Why, well, shoot, I don't know. Uh, the, uh, I, I basically call this guy a carnival barker. You know, they, they tar and feathered this guy. He was up in his, uh, his soapbox just, you know, you know, to give him all these promises. And the yeah. promises he couldn't really keep. Yeah. Getting all kinds of thousands of dollars from uh, John Donable. You remember the Atlantic Scooters sure. football team? Yeah. Well, this guy had it all. He had all the answers. He had nothing. Nothing. So I did a commentary September 30th, and I started at Q on September the 8th, and uh, I got a lawsuit. Uh, they sued me for $100,000 personally, J.I., and the station for $500,000. I'm here, yeah. and you're on the air day one. 22, well, 22 days to make it official. <laughs> they're going, you said what? Can you back it up? And I had to call my buddies here at the newspapers, and they're all backing me up. This, this J.I. guy. So it's still pending, is it? Uh, well, you know, he wanted 600000 We offered him fifty. He wanted another, you know, maybe, maybe a quarter of a million. We offered him twenty. Got down to 10, and then forget it. If you don't take it now, you're an idiot. And he got nothing. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. nothing. But I'm sure he's going to be picking on me because uh, uh, he, he wrecked a call up here? Uh, he used to. I, 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 don't, I just don't see. You see J.I. shuffling along every once in a while at the Sobe store in Queen Street. Why, with uh, his little bulldog? We, that's right. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> Cute as a button. Yeah, he sued me and for a bulldog, not, bulldog not bad either. <laughs> the, bull <laughs> <laughs> the bulldog sued me for half a mil, too. I don't know what he was going for. But, <laughs> You end up at Q107. You went, you went through that, and you stayed there for a while, but you ended up uh, working at uh, City TV for a little bit. Yeah, that would be the... Well, a lot longer than a little bit. Yeah, the Much Music uh, affiliates, uh, they have Bravo, uh, the Space Channel. I'm sure you get all those here, and they're, they're just launching much more music. I think yeah. that's today, actually, yeah. uh, for guys our age. Kind of a, a VH1 Canadian content type sure. deal. And uh, I was there... Uh, well, I, was up, well, I was doing Q in the morning uh, from 5 o'clock until 9, and then I'd, go, I'd, I'd do City TV, the 11 yeah. o'clock sports, from 4 o'clock until... 11.30 at night. Right. <laughs> I did that for five years. And, wow. Oh, that that's was a grind. A, that was a long day. Yeah. But the, yeah. And the hits just kept on coming, and the bills were coming in, so I was happy for a while. And then I got fired at a queue, and I uh, went, you know, went, went into the city, did some uh, talk show stuff on the Fan 590, which is the uh, uh, local uh, all-sports talk that's show. That's still up and running. In the very successful. And, and they're doing very well. Ratings are huge. Yeah. yeah. 
And then uh, I just went to a little station called uh, TSN. So how about that? Yeah, uh, I remember you called me when the show just went on the air. You were very nice. Yeah, yeah. You, wow. you called, I laughed openly. Got it? <laughs> it's Philly. <laughs> you and his meanies, I and his weenies, sir. Congratulations. We're all so gosh darn proud of you. I loved it. I kept the message. I still have it. You? <laughs> well, it's good. I mean, I mean, I mean you, you taught me so much in this business. And, uh, not, only, not only were you a mentor, but, uh, you know, so I was obviously a huge fan. You taught me a lot about this business. Yeah. We, and we started it. I mean, I was, tw I was 20 years old when I started here in 81. Is that is all you were at that time, was 20 years old? <laughs> exactly. yeah. We took you away from third base to CHSJ St. John, New Brunswick. That's right. Bounced your ass in the ball tournament and then hired you. <laughs> we had an excellent ball team in this place. Dandy. Oh, man. Johnny Moore, Doug Reynolds, Rick Howe. We had some Davy Davey Chalk, still not talking to me. That's right. He's, a, he's in the valley now. <laughs> That's right. He's still holding that grudge, is he? I guess so. <laughs> Big, lumbering first baseman. <laughs> Dead pole hitter. Jeez, we'll, we'll put six guys on the right side of the right side of the diamond. And he will never hit it through the infield. But we had some. We had uh, you know Jeff Banks. Oh, Jim Goldrich. Yeah. Alan Saunders was the umpire back. Bless then. his soul. Passed away. Yes, you know that. I'm yeah. aware. Yeah. Boy, that was those were good times. And we never. I mean, we'd go through the season. You know, forty-two and three. Yeah. But we always lose to the stupid stinking newspaper. Yeah, we did. Too. Not yeah. the Daily News, but the other one. Chronically horrid. <laughs> Chronically horrid. <laughs> and they'd get, they always had our number. We'd go in 42-2, and two, and we'd end up, you know, like we'd go to the championship game and lose to these guys. You played second. I played third. Mama played fiddle. That's right. Papa played bass. End up at the old fireman's club drinking vodka and orange, uh, an orange uh, pop. That's right. Or whatever it was. Pretzels. No wonder Chuck's not talking to me. That's right. I believe your favorite drink was a London Dock with seven with a twist of lime or lemon. That's right. Just to see if the uh, whoever the bartender was would get it right. And very seldom, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> Ended up marrying the person that did. No, just kidding. Thank you. It's 20 minutes after 9 o'clock. 2, 3, 4. Bump, bump. Thank you. Listen, we're going to take a, a time out, and John Gallagher's in studio. We reminisce here a little bit, and uh, we can bring you into the uh, mix here this morning as well if you want to join us. Gallagher, he's on the air. Have you seen him on TSN? Problem that I have with it is when is it on? You know, it's on at 8.30. It's on at 11.30. I'm in bed by then, and I haven't figured out how to record in the VCR yet. Yeah, 12, 12, 12. And I suppose you're going to be buried with baseball and the rest of it, so we're going to talk about your life and your times here this morning and that for all of that i have a nice chocolate glazed cookie to give you from french pastry if you're a real good boy here this morning my buddy's lou and linda yeah and i know what yeah. you're looking for is really is a keith with tomato juice we'll be back in a little after that gallagher in studio and of course uh, john and i go back a, a goodly number of years back to what do you say 1981 81 i was in uh, that hot bed of romance and intrigue st john new brunswick wow oh boy and yeah. back then it wasn't much of a town no. Oh, these smokes. I haven't been back here since my old family left or those passed away. That was about it for me in St. John. Absolutely. Now it's going through a real nice renaissance period. You know, the downtown area, the market area, it's really up in the, yeah. uh, on the yeah. up and up. And, of course, it's coming around here in old good old Nova Scotia, too. We have some, there's some plums down there to be sure that we're getting our fair share of the sable and the rest of it. So, uh, you know, that's what we have to look at right now. Yeah, I was talking to Rick Al. How's the economy here? How are things going? Well, if you listen to the municipal government and the provincial government, uh, who we need some help from the federal government, everybody is tapped, but for the six, uh, $20 billion in EI money that they hosed us on, but beyond uh, all of that, uh, you know, and then they're deciding, well, what do we do with it? Will we give it back to some of the people, or what do we do here? Anyway, I just don't know what to do. We don't have any money. And Russell McClellan's up there with a hat in his hand again, trying to uh, trying to convince him to give us some money for health care. But we're, we're hanging in. When you look at the mm -hmm. province uh, of Nova Scotia, uh, Halifax, this, this region right around here does very well. I mean, uh, our unemployment rate's probably below the national average here, and there is indeed a lot going on. I mean, uh, we've got the Sable Offshore, which is not the best deal. I don't think that we possibly could have cut, depending on what your political stripe is. But beyond all that, uh, through, and then we got forced into amalgamation down here as well, just to bring you up to speed if you didn't catch the slideshow. Thank you. Um, oh, yes, you used to say, uh, 300 11. Slides now. Yeah, $381 million uh, in the bucket, and uh, we overspent by $20 million, and... Uh, uh, hey. Oh, the, yeah, the, yeah, the show's over at 11. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we can go on, but we're not going to. Let's get to Peter. wants to say howdy. Hi, Peter. How are you this morning? I'm fine. John, love the show. It's a pretty stupid way to make a living, isn't it, Peter? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I was thinking this morning, you remind me of Howard Stern without the hair. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I, you know, I, I, I've got the new hair, actually. That's right. As I've said before, he's short, he's bow-legged, and he has plugs for hair, but we'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> uh, a couple questions. Yes, sir. Number one, are you going to be getting any of the Blue Jays personnel on over the winter? Uh-huh. And number two, what the hell is going on with Tim Johnson and Vietnam? Because now all the Toronto papers are talking about his credibility that he has none, that he's basically lied to the players about fighting in the trenches in Vietnam. 
his UL, his UCLA scholarships and all that stuff. Yeah, first of all, uh, we'll wait till uh, good old Roger Clemens wins another Cy Young. You know, he's uh, got a Cy Young award for each of his kids, Corey, Carrie, and Corby. Sounds like sounds like George <laughs> Foreman. <laughs> yeah, George, 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 and George. He yelled George, and we're all running. Sounds like Kathy Lee Gifford's kids, you know, Cody, Corey. He's going to have to have another son because he needs another baby, for goodness sakes. We'll have him on when he wins. Uh, the unfortunate situation with uh, Tim Johnson, everyone pads their resume. Yeah. You know, people think, I graduated from high school. Bam! <laughs> I did not, although I went back for the high school graduation, the 20th anniversary, and... Rice, New Brunswick. I was parking the cars that night. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Valet, sir, would you like your lobster broiled or Thermidor? <laughs> so, uh, uh, Tim has paddled his, uh, his, paddled his resume. He's, he was talking, you know, after a couple of cocktails. Yeah, I remember back in Vietnam over there in the old... Well, he never went. He was in the Marines training kids to go over. But he, uh, he was had a couple of cocktails one night and used to talk about his days over there. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> nobody will know. <laughs> we got Peter in Halifax who's checking it out. <laughs> they, they found out, and his credibility right now is taking a, uh, taking a crack kick in, uh, in down Toronto way. But uh, you know what? Uh, as far as the second half of the season is concerned, he said, listen, just let my record show uh, what I did to this team and how I developed this young ball club and let, 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 it, let it just rest, okay? I lied. I'm sorry. He's eating it. He's in yeah. the crow right now. Yeah. It's not like I'm a president of the United States or anything. What happened to him? Whoa. Oh, show's over at 11. <laughs> so that's it, Peter. He's, he's trying to regain a little bit of his credibility, and good, I think he's doing a fine job. Did they sort of luck into this, though, uh, John? I mean, all of a sudden they dumped the high-priced talent like Randy Myers and uh, Stanley and Guzman, and they brought in uh, Tony Phillips from uh, California. Yeah, they sent him to the Mets packing. Yeah, I mean, the minute all these guys are gone, I mean, it's like they're, they're already acknowledging defeat, and then it was like, now the young guys get a chance to play and prove themselves, but it wasn't by any planning on the Blue Jays' behalf. They just sort of locked into oh, it. Oh, just a fluke. It's the strangest situation, Peter, I've ever seen. I mean, I, I, he mentioned, we gave away Juan Guzman for a book of lottery tickets and a canned yam. Yeah. You know, he's gone, and then, you know, Phillips, and then uh, and then uh, Randy Myers, who couldn't put out a fire, for goodness sakes, and that there's another guy, oh, yeah, Ed Sprague, Mike Stanley, and then we brought up Brock Cruz back up from Syracuse, uh, gave Shannon Stewart the bat, and uh, put uh, Jose Canseco into a situation where was, he was the every day DH, and uh, what a turnaround. Yeah, I mean, I hope 11 straight wins. Yeah. That, that'll yeah. that'll take some headlines. They were very headlines. close, man. Oh, yeah. they were within three. I mean, yeah. I know this is Red Sox territory up here, but... No yeah, way. There was a, there was a little, no, it uh, is Red Sox territory. There was a little Lundies and a knot around here, I'll tell you, as far as yeah. Red Sox fans yeah. are concerned, but, but they, they did great. They were hot on it. They were that just that close. And I'm not even a Blue Jay fan. I love the Expos. Anything I feel. Oh, well, that's right. Where are they going to be next year? Oh, Virginia? man. They're like the Ottawa Lynx. It's just a feeder system, a feeder system to the rest of big league baseball. It's just a well, when, you're, when you're paying people a minimum wage to play second base, I mean, come on, you know. <laughs> Not another, good. another comment on the Blue Jays, and I'll tell you, it's amazing what lack of fans will do. Uh, their customer service has improved 100%. Uh, no problem getting good seats these days. I was in Toronto for a week back in July. I had some of the mm -hmm. best seats I've ever had. Yep. And, uh, you know, a good response. Anyway, I love the, uh, love the TV show. Uh, I think he's extended to an hour. Half hour is far too short. Hmm. Uh, loved it tonight. You had Sandy Alomar on. Guy's got a good sense of humor. Yeah, what a treat. Yeah, he seemed to be very, fairly well mar well mannered. And what about Robbie Elmore coming back to Toronto? Robbie, there's another rumor, man. I mean, uh, who are you going to give the ball to at second base? Uh, Robbie's a free agent. Love to come back. So would Pat Gillick. It's just wide open. It's free agent season starts the day the World Series ends. So it's going to be a bumpy ride in the offseason, Peter. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Roy Halladay, very impressive on Sunday. Yeah. Oh no, I know the guy was within the one 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 pitch of a of a, of a no hitter. What is he? Twenty one years old. Poor little fella. Yeah. And then Dave Steve's the first guy to run out from the bullpen. He lost a no hitter with two outs yeah. twice. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, in back to back outings. So. And, and you know what? I can't believe John. And you're going to have to speak to Brian about this. That they bumped Blue Jays baseball for hockey. Yeah. Well, here we go in this drill. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know, if they had been eleven behind, you wouldn't be saying that. You'd be going, "Go Mooseheads, go." You know, so, uh, you know, we had, to, we had to draw the line somewhere. Do we take uh, the Jays out that uh, might be able to do it? And I think in your heart of hearts, Peter, you probably thought that they probably weren't going to be able to pull it off anyway. Oh, I, did, I didn't think so, Brian, but I, I guess hockey to me is a sign of winter. I hate winter. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, listen, hey, uh, I'm in your camp there, man. Yeah, but, uh, you know, it, uh, and at the same time, bring Johnny Moore back again and, and all the good work that he had done to line this thing up over the summer and do something that he'd never done before, and that was go out and sell people an idea and then in turn sell it to the radio station. Uh, you know, I, I think it was uh, very well, it's been very well received and, you know, the very first complaint we've had on it. Well, no, <laughs> and the only other thing is too much Dr. Laura, and uh, I think you should have a little more sports, maybe 
some of the open uh, stuff off, maybe even uh, oh, the Fan 590 in, in Toronto over, overnight. Yeah. I mean, this this guy that talks about the psycho normal. Oh, and one other thing, and I'll let you go. Yeah. They've got new, <laughs> new, new pizza place open up on Roby Street. Uh-huh. 1-800-PSYCHIC-PIZZA. Yeah. If it's not there a half hour before you order it, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought this, I thought this was a plug for your brother's pizza shop. And we're not talking the plugs on the top of my head either. Peter. No, no. Anyway, have a great day. Thanks for being here, Peter. Keep up the good work, John. Thank you, friend. Bye -bye. It's 930. Let's go to uh, line number two. And Lynn is going to join us here this morning. And if you want to talk to John Gallagher, we're talking sports. We're talking about his uh, program, talking about uh, his previous life here around these parts. And invariably, you're going to have to bring up Mark McGuire, that Andrew gulping fool, and uh, see what your spin is on it. But right now, let's get to Lynn this morning. Hi, Lynn. Good morning, Brian. Welcome home, John. Oh, Lynn, how are you, darling? I'm well, thank you. Oh, good. Uh, if I was any better, I'd be two people. There you are. Mind you, I have the ego for two people, but that's not oh. important right now. Well, all right, well, you said it, dear. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Listen, John, I just want to be the second or third or whatever to tell you that show is wonderful. It's uh, high energy. It's You're funny. And uh, the interviews are terrific. You've had great guests on. I love the uh, Wayne Gretzky one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. I heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> He's a pretty good guy. I, me I remember actually back in 1981 when they flew him in here. He remembers that. Ooh. He was in for a promo. May I say something on this issue with Wayne Gretzky? Yeah. Uh, I ended up taking Gretzky around. He was promoting blue jeans at Sears. Right. And then he was into the Mr. Big Bite chocolate bar or whatever Mr. Big. it was. And I had to pony him around in, I don't know, some kind of a hack that we had going on that time. Not a bad gig. Run over, do the thing at him at Sears, and take him back to the uh, Halifax Hotel. Right. See how you guys helped him along? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't, yeah. If it wasn't for Philly yeah. driving around, I'm thinking about the pit stops in between now. <laughs> I'm sure you have some sort of tales on that day. But, but you know, John... The show ends at 11. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. But uh, I love your, your monologue at the end. What do you call it? It's uh, gross misconduct. There you go. It's, uh, it's wonderful. Well, you know, the, uh, the, the, the critics in Toronto, they have been taking a couple of shots. The ratings have been huge, Lynn. Uh, you don't get it. In fact, uh, yeah, you know, what's, you know what I said? And in fact, the Globe and Mail writes me up in the paper today, and I was telling Philly off the air, you know what, when they stop writing about you, then you're going to be right. concerned. That's right. Yeah, I think, I think P.T. Barnum once said there's no such thing as, as uh, bad press. Exactly. You know. John, I've got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. First of all, um, I am uh, a big... Uh, Boston Celtics fan, followed Larry Bird. What, uh, what's his hometown, Lynn? Uh, French Lake, Indiana. Actually. You're good. Thank you. We have a winner. Thank you. <laughs> Come down to the station and get a free mug. Now listen, when he brings the uh, Pacers up to beat the Raptors this year, do you think you can get him on? Oh, uh, Larry Bird? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, no, he's not going to sing that little Michael Jordan song like everyone else does in the ad. <laughs> but I think he'll spot. Isn't that great? Yeah. I think he'll come on the show, sure. Yeah. Also, secondly, I want to know how many three-pointers pointers you've uh, made this I, year. Man, <laughs> Lynn, I, I'm five foot seven on a good day. I haven't hit a three-pointer on the top or the end of that stupid show. <laughs> I mean, I, I, know, I nailed him in high school. Are you trying to, to miss? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm just trying to make myself. Yeah. I mean, after, after nailing the show, I, I'm just throwing up bricks. Yeah. Just to, you know, bring my bring my ego down to and size. And you're making the guests look good. That's, that's <laughs> very good. Every me. guest, Lynn, has hit the darn thing. Mm -hmm. I haven't hit a three-pointer. And the thing is only seven feet off the off the ground. Nothing it's not your regulation <laughs> size ten-footer. <laughs> right. I, I mean, have a great suggestion, if I may. Yes, please. I think one of your uh, sponsors, or TSN itself, uh, J JVC, mm -hmm. yeah. I think it would be wonderful that these big boys uh, will, would donate $1,000 for either you or the guests to, uh, to, to hit that three-pointer. Get a ta tote board going, uh, give it to Sports Canada, put, give it to a children's hospital. I think it would really generate a lot of fun. Well, I'd have to start hitting them to raise any money. <laughs> But, I mean, that's, that's an incentive to, you know, put a couple hours in the practice every day. You go, and then when Bird comes on the show, he'll give me a couple of pointers. There you go. Hey, and we're out for the races. Ten grand there for, with Bird. <laughs> Absolutely. But, anyway, you keep up the good work, John. We love the show. Well, you're a, just a darling, and uh, thanks for the pastries. Hey, okay. Good See for ya. you.
Bye-bye. Take care, Lynn. Uh, it's about 25 before 10 o'clock. John Gallagher in studio here with us this morning. We were, uh, to, of course, baseball season. The uh, big news, of course, was we're, we're into the playoffs now, of course. Uh, Mark McGuire, my, 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 this boy can peel them. Uh, and, of course, uh, then we get into the debate, and it was publicized down here by journalists that write about this kind of thing in the newspapers and, of course, talked about on this program as well. Uh, this andro gulping routine that was going on. My opinion basically was it's not banned in baseball. Bingo. You know, if you can smoke a little grass and win the silver in a downhill snowboard, uh, you know, and, and and the Olympic Committee is saying, and we're still not going to change the rules. You know, if you're if, if you're hemp hesitant, don't be bothered anymore because you can't do this. Ross Rebliati. Yeah, he got caught for what smoking. Oh, I guess it was hash, or I guess it was just in his sister. It was grass. He was smoking a little bit of grass. Well, he didn't smoke any grass. He was at a party vis-a-vis. -vis. He had a party, and a lot of people were smoking grass, and that was secondhand smoke. Apparently. Exactly. And, of course, his specialty was the, uh, of course, the uh, freestyle half pipe. No, don't you mean hash? <laughs> don't you mean hash pipe? <laughs> That's where he got caught right there. There's, there's the but, damage. But how good is the guy? He stops on the way down to take a bite of a hot dog and a hot chocolate. Okay? And he still wins. Well, you got to love you this know, guy. The, oh, the guy's on the move. Oh, it wasn't that a 24 hours of hell for this kid? But to get back to this whole, and then again, they turned around and said, look, it's not on the books, and that's a parallel I'm making here. It's not on the books as far as uh, the Olympic Committee is concerned and what was brought into uh, great refute when they had a look at this kid. Same thing has to apply for Mark McGuire, but we will have people, and, and I'll open it up again because we haven't talked about it too much. We've been kind of busy. Uh, what's your take on it? Uh, if they put an asterisk, and they will not, of course, Brian, on the bottom that's of this the guy's record. That's we've heard. That's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I mean, everyone's on it. I was checking around some uh, some uh, Blue Jays lockers, and sure, they've got the Andro 7 in their locker. I won't name names, but yeah. it's, it's a legal substance. They don't like to use it in, of course, the IOC, International Olympic Committee, or the NFL, among others, but it's it's legal in baseball. Is, and is, this, guy, this guy's hitting home runs because of great bat speed and wonderful eye-hand coordination, and the, the fact that he's like 6'5", of twisted steel and sex appeal. The drugs are not doing anything. The drugs aren't sending those, ball, those balls with 70 wonderful home runs that turned this game around yeah, no after, the, after the, the kicking they took in 1994 when the Montreal Expos, my team, uh, not again. was the best team in baseball, going to win the World Series, but the fact that they canceled the World Series, and boy, do they need that. They needed the, uh, you know, the, uh, the Cal Ripken uh, Jr. Sure. record. They needed this thing so badly, the, the race they had. And isn't it nice that he gets the home run title and Sammy Sosa finishes second, but he's going to the, he's going to the playoffs. He's going to play Atlanta today. Absolutely. Atlanta, Atlanta Cubs. Anybody stop Atlanta? Ah, uh, absolutely. I'm Cubs, thinking, I'm think looking at the Cubs, Ken. I'm thinking San Diego and Cleveland in the final. Are you? Well, I mean, the Yankees won how many? 116 games? Yeah. You know, the last team to win that many, the Cleveland Indians in 54, won 111 games. Guess how many games they won in the World Series? Not one. That's it, yeah. You know? Oh, I mean, they can peel you big time, you know, depending on what's going on that day. You know, uh, I mean, an entire season racking up those numbers, which are absolutely incredible, can go by the wayside in a heartbeat, you know. And look at the Red Sox. I know this is Red Sox territory. We, uh, yeah, do they still pump the stuff up of all the ball games up through Bangor, Maine? And no, we get rid of that, those stations. We go directly to uh, Boston now. Oh, we, God. Yeah, ABC, NBC, CBS. Oh, you got to like that. Yeah, yeah. So you get the Red Sox all the time. Well, and, you know, what was the buddy that used the dirty hands saying TD's hands? Okay, uh, I'm pumping gas for. You. Oh, Dick, Dick Tracy. Well, What's the name? Yes, Stacy. That's right, Dick Tracy. Uh, see these hands? They're gassy smelling hands. Yeah. I will pump your gas. Remember that? <laughs> and he had the lady that used to sing on the wings of a snow white dove all the time. <laughs> well, Stacy's I mean, Country Jamboree. You got it where your money's at, Pa. I couldn't believe how cheesy that was. You know, I, like you know, I thought that was cheesy. My folks used to sit me in front of Pig and Whistle all the time. That's right. They love Wayne and Schuster. I thought that was pretty uncool. Hey, my mother in punishment made sure you used to watch Tommy Hunter when I was out of That's line right. around oh, the oh. hose. Tommy Hunter. Canada's country gentleman. That's right. First time I ever saw him, uh, complete with a brand new fresh face full of pimples, was about 1959 <laughs> in a place called Marville, France. He and Gordy Tapp were on a bus <laughs> making making the tour around. Tommy Hunter. This guy's like six foot six. He had the bad, bad complexion, oh, huh? Oh. Looks like his face was on fire. Someone put it out with a track shoe. Could I have the drum roll, please? Thank you. You Auto. got it. I say it here. It comes out there. We're going to take a break. But as a matter of fact, his son used to fly me to Monk and do the lotto show. See how small world it is. Oh, yeah. As I often said, it's a small world. Yeah, try to paint it sometime. I took that flight with you a couple of times. That's right. We go way back. 21 now before 10 o'clock. We're back in a little bit. Brian wants to talk to you. This Brian wants to talk to you. You want to talk to John Gallagher? Then come on in. I'm going to talk about uh, sports. Uh, your deal on McGuire is simply this. If it's not against the law, no asterisks. That's the name of the deal. And he brought baseball back to where it rightfully should have been after about a four-year hiatus. We'll be back in a little bit. 
1-800-849-4949. Here to Brian on line one. Hi, Brian. Hi, good morning, guys. How are you? Not too bad. We're just talking of you. Yes. Sir. Not it's about like, you, but of you. <laughs> it's just like old home week there, isn't it? Well, I, this is Brian. War can I use your last name? Sure. Yeah, Brian Warshek. And, of course, Brian worked with us. Uh, you worked with us at CJ, right? Yeah. And uh, John and I worked at uh, CHSJ in St. John. Yes. Actually, you trained me. <laughs> you did. I was I was 19 years old, high school dropout, doing the 6 o'clock CBC Sports because they were on strike then. <laughs> and I was doing the 6 o'clock CBC Sports, and uh, Brian trained me. He taught me how to... Well, now I mean, tell me how to type, put a story together. That was back in 1980. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. boy. Absolutely. John, let me ask you something. First of all, congrats on the great show. Um, the uh, the writers in the Globe last week were uh, talking about your uh, interviewing skills, not being maybe what they considered up to par, but the numbers are two and a half times greater than what um, GSN were, were hoping for. Are you happy with your time slot? Well, uh, it's, it's, what is it? Oh, well, that's what I was going to ask you secondly, because every time I turn around, I'm catching on a Saturday afternoon, then I'm seeing you late at night, then I'm seeing you some other time. Is there a, a set spot that you're supposed to be in, or are you working towards that for the second half of the year? Uh, well, we're on 1030 every night, but sometimes they'll slip us in. If there's a football game that starts, uh, let's say, in Edmonton or Calgary, they'll slip us out at 7 o'clock on a Friday. Uh, it's, it's 1130 Eastern time, Yeah, and that's going to be our time slot. That is the, I mean, it's more, it's a different show at 1030 for one thing. You could say things like, you know, lesbian and, well, yeah. especially when you're talking about the Canadian Women's Olympic Hockey Team. Uh, we, <laughs> two, three, four. Uh, you, you, know, you can't say that at 7 o'clock, but we're going to be on at 11.30 Eastern for the, uh, from, uh, I guess, from the get-go uh, October 26th on. Oh, that's great. So it'll be a set time we'll be able to turn in. Yeah, the ratings are good. The critics, you know, the... Uh, the ratings are very good. No, they're not big fans. Of course, Brian and I talked about the Globe and Mail today. They took a little shot at me. Ha, 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 ha. But again, if, you know, as long as you spell your name right, that's the important thing. You, you bet. Listen, awful good. I know you have more calls. Uh, talk to you later, guys, and uh, keep it up, John. All right, Brian. Very keep good. listening, huh? Bye -bye. Brian Warshick. How about Excellent that? Yeah. to hear from him. Yeah, yeah. He posts every once in a while, as a matter of fact. He's a pretty good follow to bring us up to speed on what's going on in the traffic out there. And a lot of people don't call. I wonder how many times he's won that 92 free minutes. It's probably Hollywood. 15 out before 10 o'clock. It's uh, Dave on line two. Hi, David. Good morning. How are you doing, gentlemen? I'm fine. That's good. I just have one question for John. It's a good show, John. Yeah. Uh, who is Toronto finally going to get for Felix Bosman? Oh, boy. I've heard everyone from a package deal to Vancouver for uh, Pavel Bure. Trevor, Lin Trevor Linden. Trevor Linden from the Islanders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can't buddy, sign him. No, an old buddy of Pat Quinn, so that's a perfect tie-in there. Uh, if they can't sign some of the big guns in Montreal, as you know, Brzezinski, Savage, uh, Malahoff are sitting out uh, and are unsigned, and uh, Corson's sitting out. They, they put a package together for him because... Abs may not want to go in with those two goalies, Theodore and uh, and Tebow. Uh, should have made that deal with the, with the Florida Panthers for Warner and and Niedermeyer because I'll tell you what, Dave Niedermeyer is just uh, he's uh, he's killing them in spring training or in, in fall training. He's playing great. Yeah, but he wants to stay there, I think. Anyway, doesn't he? Yeah, that was so close to that deal, it was they could taste it. Is that right? But they wanted a second opinion on the uh, fact that he had all those concussions and yeah. the uh, and the Panthers wouldn't do it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Thank my you friends. Bye. Excellent. And get to uh, line three. And Jimmy here this morning. You want to talk to us? 493-8255-493. Talk. The uh, cop button, by the way, is uh, on back order. <laughs> no problem. And, but it's been such a long time. I told Walter Labuki here. It's a cop button for the fans out there. This morning, they might be listening to John or just regular listeners of mine. Now, <laughs> in the event that you get a little Huck Flemish, you know, that uh, disease that can strike at any time. All right. Keep the pearls and throw away the rest. Uh, we normally have a cough button, and uh, it's on back order. So, as I told Walter, tell a guy that you get the back order from the... Your guy's better now. So this is what it sounds like. He's I, been healed. I take the whole headset off. <laughs> it, I, I look like Judy, the Time Life operator. Hi. Would you like the entire encyclopedia set with your new phone? So I take the thing off and go... <laughs> there you go. How's that? How's that for professional radio? As Mickey Rooney said to Judy Garland, hey, let's put on a show. <laughs> 13 before 10. Good morning, Jimmy. Hi, John. How are you? Hey. Uh, Jimmy Flynn calling, John. Jimmy Flynn. Oh, <laughs> my fine fisherman friend. How are you? Oh, excellent to hear from you. Welcome home. Hi, uh, Sylvia. Oh, that's great. She heard you are going to be on. She was all excited. Excellent. I, I was telling Brian off the air, we thought it might be you. Thought it might be you. <laughs> we had this thing called the Dinner with the Oilers back when the uh, Edmonton Oilers uh, AHL team was here. Yeah. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy and Sylvia won a uh, night out with me. That's right. We went to the keg on a Thursday night. <laughs> Jimmy says, "Come back to the come back to the house for a couple of cocktails." I got back Monday <laughs> and, and learned how to play the banjo. <laughs> it's true. Every word is true. Yeah, what a great time. You introduced me to Swish. <laughs> Remember those days? Oh yeah. man. 
Yeah, having a good time. Tell me a story. How you been? Oh, that's great. Just finished shooting my new comedy video with Rebecca Cohen on Thursday night. Yeah, how you making out dinner, Jimmy? Oh, wonderful. I'm at the road now playing in Woodstock to Buzzard tonight. Yeah. Yeah, we're down to Cape Fenton for a couple of days. But I was up in Toronto last year. I went to a Maple Leaf game. I saw something kind of funny. When the Maple Leaf scored, this guy had a dog, and the dog did a somersault, right? Yeah. And the Maple Leaf scored again, the dog did a somersault. So when I was said, the guy, what's going on with your dog? He said, well, every time the Maple Leaf scored, the dog does a somersault. I said, that's amazing. I said, what happens? The dog wins. He said, I don't know. I don't own, own a dog five years. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if the leaf wins? <laughs> you know what? You know what? It's, 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 it's a favorite of, uh, of Hab fans. How come uh, Leafs, Leaf fans have to drink of the saucers? Yeah. Because all the cups are in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jimmy, you say, you say that you're on the road now. Yeah. I'm just driving my motor home up to the Brunswick, and we're up that night, and we're coming back tomorrow. I gotta go in the studio for my new video, and then back to Cape Breton, and then we're off to Toronto, yeah. and then we're heading out west for a couple of weeks. How did you make out down the uh, Cohen doing your recording for your new video? It was wonderful, Brian. Yeah, what a wonderful! I, for 25 years, I've been on stage. I think that was the best audience I've had in 25 years. Really? Yeah, we got a wonderful, wonderful, funny video. It's gonna go for Christmas. I got a new Christmas album coming out too for Christmas for the kids. Well, let's not mess around. Tell you what we'll do. Uh, when uh, we, we get to it and we stay in touch periodically every once in a while. Last time I saw you was the night with Joe Cocker and uh, hadn't seen Sylvia in a long time. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should get together in here and have a few laughs one morning. Okay, guaranteed. All right. Hey, John, welcome home. How long are you down for? Uh, not, well, I'm not leaving until I see you and Sylvia. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, ha I'm hammer down southern bound to your town, my friend. You got my cell number. Call me and we'll set supper up or something for the morning or something. Guaranteed. Okay. Uh, what, a, what a pleasure it is to hear from you, buddy. Okay, you take care of yourself, okay? And, I will. Uh, I'm so happy for you. You're doing well. Thanks a lot. Take care, friend. Jimmy. Okay, bye, Brian. It's 11 now before 10 o'clock. We'll take our final time out break breaking this hour, and we'll be back with John Gallagher, and maybe talk about his predictions, what's coming up in the baseball rounds, and what's going to happen this year in hockey. We'll do all of that, and maybe you have a question for him as well. We've got a brand new show. It's on TSN, and it's a dandy. And got some big numbers, no matter what the Globe and Mail say. <laughs> and, we'll be, <laughs> and we'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> Two eight minutes before ten o'clock. If you want to join us, if you've seen Gallagher, if you haven't, I suppose as Brian pointed out here this morning, you've sort of been battered about a little bit. And of course, uh, you know, you're a sports network station. You're going to have to show some ball games. We just can't break in to show Gallagher all of a sudden. But you'll have a regular time period starting the end of the baseball season. Yeah, absolutely. Once the World Series is over, it's uh, onward, upward, and Edwards. And uh, well, we couldn't. I mean, it was a triple header yesterday. Yeah, yeah. There's pregame shows. There's postgame shows. Uh, there's just no time to do the show. So. Uh, and, and we're going up against the uh, new CTV Sportsnet that's coming on. They, they go on the air October 9th. I will bury them. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring them on. Come on. <laughs> Daddy's home. <laughs> Give me a ball-peen hammer. I'll knock those guys into next Tuesday. Listen, I watched you the other night. I mean, I've caught your shows periodically. Like I said, when you were at 1130, a little bit late for me at times. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sometimes what they do is they repeat them so I can catch them in the afternoon again right. uh, down here. So we've been doing it. And one of the things that I mean, I, I always take a giggle at is these professional wrestlers. I mean, if, if, if this isn't phony, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and, and the last time uh, that I caught your show, uh, somebody had you in a headlock until you turned the color purple, which made you blue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is tough to do. And I would say He's the world fighting championship, the ultimate fighting champion. He's 34 years old, busted up his hand, knocking, knocking some guy out. So he's now with the WWF. Uh, I mean, these guys are cartoon characters. I wouldn't, sure. I wouldn't know the intercontinental champion, uh, Brian, if he crawled up on my knee and bit me. But this guy, this guy has some credibility. He had some credibility to the WWF. We went on a little uh, workout last week. He's got his hand on my head, and I'm just pounding him. Just yeah, giving I him everything that, yeah. I can, okay? Yeah. And he's, he's looking at me, and he's got his shirt off, and he's just cut. Yeah. He thought he better go Holyfield look good. This guy is cut. Buffed. And I'm going, bang, bang. He's getting he's holding my head, my hairpiece, which didn't fall off, thank God. <laughs> he says, is that all you got? Is that all you got? So I, I hit him again, and then I come up, like, you know, I'm just bobbing and he hit him. And he hit him in the head, and he sucked him right on the jaw. Yeah. I could hear his teeth go slap. I went, oh, I'm in for it. I've got two things. <laughs> you know, do I run or do I do I make for some good television and go after him? <laughs> and you I, did. Yes. Yeah, I know. He picked me up and by the neck. Yes. And I'm going, <laughs> uh, 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 and that's when I started to turn purple. He throws me. And it was all in fun, or so I thought. Yeah. Oh man, he he had me in the uh, he had me in the death claw. It was not pretty. Yeah. I was completely out of breath. But uh, what is it with this thing with the, this world wrestling fed? I mean, there's a number of them, uh, and of course, you know, you get the Hulk Hogan. Hulk's a good guy one time, a bad guy the next time. I mean, yeah, I can figure that out. This is not real, but this is making money, man. And you know what they want to do with the WWF is come to Mike Bullard. Do you get the Comedy Channel? Yeah, here? I talked to Mike in the hallway a couple of uh, weeks ago. As a matter of fact, he was on tour down here. Oh man, this guy is making a big splash. They want him 
to go up against me in this World Wrestling Federation match, a la the Jay Leno Hulk Hogan thing about a right. two, couple of months ago. Yeah. Him and I in the ring. This guy's 6'2", maybe 240. Oh, Mike Bullard? Yeah. He's not, he's not a small lad. No, I'm 5'7", 174. Yeah. On a Stairmaster. <laughs> 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 they want him and I to go into the ring at the, uh, I guess it's Sky Dome, in front of 68,000 people. <laughs> and and don't get out. And wrestle. <laughs> and, that's, and, 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 and CSN and the Comedy Channel have agreed to it. I mean, what were we going to do? CSN and the Comedy Channel have agreed to it. <laughs> yes. Talk about loading things up. Yes, he's going to go. Sports man beats up comic. Or, uh, that's what I hope the scenario is. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. How big are the prizes? A little writer's embellishment. I don't know. Well, am I going to have Hulk? in my side, or I guess he's, he's at the WCW. Who, who, yeah. Well, I have Stone Cold Steve Austin on my side. Yeah. Will he have The Undertaker, or, and again, I But, I mean, is it, is it, this, I want to talk about this wrestling thing. Is it, It's phony, am I right? I mean, this, this is, this, this is a stage deal that we're talking okay, about I'll here. I'll tell you something real funny. <clears throat> uh, we were, uh, I, I did some promotion with them, and, uh, 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 they were trying to set up someone to be on the show. Yeah. And, uh, Ken Shamrock's coming on the show. I go, uh, is he uh, a champion of anything? And the guy looks at his calendar, uh, no, not yet. <laughs> Okay. I swear to God. Talk to us October the 5th, and he will be. <laughs> I swear to you, yeah. God. So it's pretty well staged, but boy, they're making bazillions of dollars. Well, it's all thing. choreographed, and you know, sure. it's, it's good talent, and it's good. Uh, these guys are, uh, I mean, they fly through the air with the greatest of these, and these are finely tuned athletes. And, they, you know, it's, uh, some of the guys who watch this, they, you know what they're calling it? Soap operas for guys. Yeah. You know, I, I remember uh, at one time over on uh, on a Roby Street at ATV, mm -hmm. uh, and Al Zink, uh, who, who would be out there, might be listening to us well. Wrestling promoter. You remember the days of Al? I do remember Al, yeah. And then they would have uh, the Bulldog, and they would have... Uh, the Vashon brothers. All, all of the brothers that were named differently, though. They, they, I mean, they all had the... They were all brothers, but they all had different last names. Yes. It was really weird. Yes. And then uh, some of them are still doing it. But I used to sneak on over when I was doing the midday show between 11 and 1 o'clock, and you just go right out of radio, because radio and television were in the same building. Got it. And all there was was a door, and the door was never locked, okay? But there was a door there, so it would slide on through, and I would take a peek in the studio. And they're going through their moves. And, oh, yeah, and... and we got a crowd, we got a house full here of about 150 people, all right, with the bleachers set up. And it was one of those deals, and they realized how fake this whole thing was, where one guy went at the other guy and accidentally slapped him. I thought he was going to start to cry. Okay, you got the lip on? <laughs> like that wasn't supposed to happen. He actually slapped me. <laughs> went, That's going to leave a mark. Right, well, but fill the place every time. Yes. Absolutely every time. And you don't want to tell them it's fake, because look what happened to Andy Kaufman. Remember that in the David Letterman show? That's this right. guy just got swacked. When he woke up, his suit was back in style. You know, and hey. Hey, listen, up and out, just about, with three minutes to go. <laughs> hey, who's the talk show host here? And Drew Carey turns around. Not Brad, Drew yes, Carey, Jim Carey. Jim Carey. The same guy. No fooling you. Hey, Jim uh, Carey spit on this guy. Yeah. And uh, forget the wrestlers. As, as, as Kaufman did uh, during their, their time together when he was wrestling with this and guy. This guy put Jim Carey, who's just filming the movie, uh, Man into of the Into a neck brace. Into a neck brace, into the hospital. I forget the name of the guy, Jerry something. But Some he's no a, name. He's a bad mother. No Shut your mouth. No brain. No kidding. Uh, very quickly, let's have a look uh, with only a couple of minutes left here, John. Uh, we're into baseball season right now, wrapping up, uh, heading into the, uh, we're into the playoffs right now. What do you say? Expos. That's my, that's my team. Uh, just very quickly on that, what's going to uh, happen with the Lou? I mean, uh, he's gone. That's done. I would think, uh, I think the boys in, the, in, in, in Dodger land are looking at him, but I think the Expos will stay for another season. I say Moises wanted to uh, join Dad on the West Coast. Is that where it's going? And Moises is picking on the, uh, picking on the Expos, saying, I mean, this guy gave, gave everything. I mean, gave everything to the team. What, uh, good coach? Absolutely. This guy, he worth steal, more than he's making the He could probably steal you 12 or 15 games a season, really. That's saying a lot. I, I hope he stays. Philip, he's a quality guy. Will the Expos stay? They got one more season and a big date coming up October 7th where they'll build that Labatt Stadium downtown. That's right. It's yeah. either, uh, you know, go big or go home. And but it then looks they like get a situation. Home. Well, I mean, it's not that far out of town to begin with, and you're not filling the place out there. So what's the difference going to be downtown? Oh, yeah. You and I have been to Montreal together. That yeah, place is just, you know, it's it's Desolation Boulevard out yeah. there at Pinot. It's terrible. Thank you. The smoke meat's excellent. No, listen, Ben's my friend. World Series, uh, like Cleveland. Yeah, like who Cleveland. lost yesterday? That's just a little, that's just a hiccup. And if I had some time this morning, I would like to go through what Mo Vaughn said after the game yesterday. I can't quite figure Mo out what he's talking about. I hit the ball, I'm supposed to hit the ball, and I want to hit the ball. I'd like to go to a ball. Uh, and that's about it. Okay, we're paying this guy $20 million a year, and he's doing, he can't understand what he's talking about. And in mid-season, mid he goes, you know what? 
I'd like to become a Toronto Blue Jay next year. <laughs> That's what he said in the middle of a pennant race. I swear to you, God. Listen, John, it's been a lot of fun uh, getting caught up. It's been a long time since I've seen you, but we'll touch base. Obviously, you're going to be around uh, the city for the next week or so, and we'll never be the same again. And all the very best to you on your show. And again, uh, as of uh, the end of October, give me a date and a time that you're going to be seen here locally. Okay, uh, October 26th. Uh, 11.30, and we rerun, I guess, at 4.30 Eastern and, uh, and uh, 1.30 the next day. Hey, listen, you've hit some home runs, man, and I'm proud of you. You're an excellent man. I, you know what? I'll never forget the calls, and I'll never forget the times we spent and all the things I learned from you, my guy, Brian Phillips. Best, best to you each morning, by the way. All right. Good to see you. Johnny, 10 o'clock in the morning. Let's get to it, and we're going to light it up with the morning news. Doug Reynolds has that.